All right, guys, here we are, fourth video. And this is gonna be a continuation straight up from the last one. In the last video, we looked at, what did we have? Our inclometer, or the angle of the dangle. And we looked at our sort of engine stats, pressures, um, kind of screen. So we're gonna go on to looking at logs. So here we're at, as mentioned, drilling screen, angle of the dangle, and engine stats. Now, logs. So if we head across to the first of the log screen, data, basically you can download background information of these via USB. Uh, this has a USB port in it. And you can actually load parameters. So all the background settings in the rig, you can actually save them onto USB and then transfer them from one rig to another. Um, it's more, I believe, when the rig's brand new and they've got to put all the settings in to actually make it run. Because uh, it's definitely not something that we use all the time as operators. Log, these last three we don't really use, so we don't worry about them. Performance log, basically, what day was it? How many meters did you drill on that day? How many holes? How many hours did the percussion accumulate or the hammer accumulate? How much time did you spend tramming? How long was the engine running for? And how much fuel did you burn? And yeah, they basically count automatically each day. If you start running like 24 hour, like dual shifts, like a day shift and a night shift, if you don't turn the machine off, then that all gets confused and you end up with just weird numbers. Performance, so these are all resettable. Um, so you can keep track of how much fuel you burn, engine hours, meters drilled, fuel consumption. And these are your accumulated times, so these are permanent. So in this rig's life, it has burnt 2,702 liters. It's been running for 261 hours, which is pretty much brand new. Uh, fuel consumption, liters per minute, liters per hour. This rig has drilled almost 8,000 meters in its short life and percussion hours, training hours, etc. Cool. Settings, this is our first of the settings screen. So, our first one up here, current user, operator. So, we can actually get in here and you can actually change user, which prompts up, you know, asking for passwords. And you can get into the background settings. So what does that mean? That means, well, yeah, background settings. You can get in there, you can change different things, you can mess with it, you can make things better. Basically, what they do is they understand that not all operators are the brightest individuals. So they lock, they lock operators out, basically. They give you an operator mode, which is what the rig happens to be in when you turn it on. And that just gives you the basics to operate the machine. And then you can access background settings to make different adjustments. Uh, you can change the language from English to Swedish because these are a Swedish built machine. Uh, units, obviously you can change everything from metric to imperials. If you want to play the, uh, the Yankee game. Hole length, basically that changes from the length of the hole to the bench height which will obviously be a, a shorter number. The display is just brightness and contrast. Miscellaneous, enable mode switch button. So while you're drilling, there's actually a button on the front of this joystick here, where when you press it, it'll change the rig from, it'll change the rig from a drilling mode, where it's drilling, Automatically, when you press that button, it'll go to a positioning mode. So now, we're still drilling, the rods are still turning. However, now if I was to move the joysticks, I would actually be moving the mast, as long as I've got that button pressed, pressed in. And then as soon as I release that button, it's back into drilling mode. Now if I move the joysticks, it'll 
you know, alter, it'll do drilling functions instead of just moving the mast. So it's pretty cool that you can do two at one, it's pretty handy. Uh, where were we? So in here, this is our next screen across, is our length sensor. So our cradle positions. So when you move the hammer up and down the mast, it'll actually stop at preset points depending on what you're doing. And they're called your M stops. So you got M1, which is with the drifter right down the bottom of the mast. So that'd be the top of the mast, that'd be the bottom. And then as you come along, M1, M2 is when the centralizer is open. M3 is when you fast feed to the bottom of the hole. So when you fast, if you put that rod away and you just tell that hammer to go straight down, it'll actually stop before it smashes into the bottom of the mast. And what tells it to stop is sort of this M stop, it's cradle position. So it knows that when it gets to that set position there, that's where it is. It knows when it gets to there that it, it has to stop, otherwise it's gonna smash into things. What else we got? M4, so that's with a rod, that's when you're pulling out of the hole. M5 is when you wanna put the rod into the carousel. So that's lining up the bottom of the rod with the bottom of the carousel, which is that thing on the side there that holds all the rods, the cassette or the magazine as it's also known. And then M6 is all the way to the top. For the same reason as uh, like M3, it's to stop it from, so then when you run the hammer all the way up, you don't smash it into the top of the mast and, you know, send it to the moon. Drilling screen. So if you put the code in, you'll get an extra menu in here and you can go change all the background settings. This gets really technical, kind of. So different drill bits. So there are five different drill bits you can choose from and that's basically five different parameters that you can preset. So when you go into different ground, you can select a different drill bit and it will automatically change all the background settings to suit that ground. Drill control, where we've got medium at the moment. Medium seems to work well for most ground, but that'll change where the green bits are, which means it'll change um, basically the ideal settings for the type of ground that you're in. So you obviously want to have different types of settings for different types of ground. Um, that's all I'm going to do for this video because we're currently at the bottom of this hole. As you can see, it's stopped drilling. We've asked for 17.1 and we've got 17.1 five rods now. Perfect. So I'll pull these rods out and on the next video I will continue on talk a little bit more about this drilling screen and we'll move away along those settings. Alright, see you in the next video.